Hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's weekly market outlook here for Admiral Markets. My name is Jens Klatt and uh, in the upcoming 45 minutes, we want to have a look at the markets, what drove markets, um, especially um, probably you had a look at the uh, current situation and the DAX. DAX made it back above 11,000 points and not only that, but it's um, yeah, continuously bid the day uh, so far and um, I have an idea what just happened there uh, so there is today it's it's the third Friday of the month and it's not a big expiration it's not uh, triple witching but it's a small expiration and uh, over the last days it uh, could clearly be seen that there was a um, quite high open interest um, at the region around 11,000 points or to make it um, less uh, complicated it was uh, yeah, there was a bet out there of um, bigger market participants, in my opinion, um, which uh, was aiming on holding the DAX below 11,000 points till today, uh, 1 p.m. German time or 12 p.m. London. Um, now look at the uh, look at the clock, and you will see it's 1 p.m. Um, and uh, in fact, after yesterday's comments, um, uh, which were um, then denied by the U.S. Treasury, but still there was obviously where there's probably some hope, some speculation that there is some some truth, at least uh, um, a little a little truth in it, uh, that probably the U.S. will reduce their tariffs on uh, Chinese goods um, due to the high volatility in markets, which hit the markets since the beginning of October. Um, it let market squeeze higher yesterday in the evening already us equities too and and probably uh, that's one of the reasons why markets were capable of of, of breaking then uh, above 11000 points and thanks to hedging taking place from bigger market participants who got caught on the wrong foot probably that's one of the main drivers uh, bringing the dax currently up to um, 11,100 points. But before we go into too many details here, first of all, we have to have a look at the risk disclaimer. Um, and then I will not only give you some, uh, some, some words here on this and some talk, but I will give you also some, some graphics, uh, what, what just happened. And we will, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, uh, um, grasp this concept a little better then, because it's a fantastic and very fascinating, interesting concept, which, uh, yeah, sometimes works out pretty well and results in nice trends being developed, uh, or developing over the, over the day then. So first of all, the risk disclaimer, trading with financial instruments offered by Admiral Markets carry a high level of risk, which is not suitable for all investors due to their complex, na complex nature. For all further infos on the risk disclaimer please feel free to reach out to the website from Admiral Markets and uh, check the risk disclaimer there um, we want to have a little deeper look here into um, uh, the ESMA regulation which is uh, dated back to August 2018 but still something which uh, drives especially um, retail clients and has an effect on their trading um, especially now after if I'm not mistaken, uh, those regulations become per became permanent. Um, so there is a differentiation between retail clients and professional clients. Um, retail clients now have a leverage restriction to a max of 130 in forex major pairs, uh, forex major currency pairs, and um, 1 to 20 for other currency pairs. So majors considered or can be considered should be considered euro USD, dollar JPY, for example, GBP USD. Um, also something we want to have a deeper look in after this. Uh, a crushing defeat for Theresa May um, in her Brexit vote. 1 to 20, um, this is uh, for minor currency pairs like GBP Australian dollar, for example, uh, but also CFDs like the DAX 30, like gold, for example. And um, now the differentiation between retail clients and professional clients comes into play. If professional clients meet certain criteria, um, also here, um, right right now, uh, feel free to reach out to Admiral Markets for further infos on this topic. Um, if you meet certain criteria, you can reapply um, as a um, professional client, and then there is no leverage restriction for you. On top of that, usually, I have to say, there's no ba negative balance protection too. So in fact, if you're a retail client and you have an unlimited protection against negative balances, now there's a special offering from Admiral Markets, which needs to be emphasized here. Um, Admiral Markets is 
offering a negative balance protection for their professional clients up to 50,000 British pound according to their policy too. This is one of the reasons why uh, you should definitely um, um, take Admiral Markets into account for your trading in the future. There's also several other reasons. That's by the way me. Um, for example, here in Germany, <clears throat> Admiral Markets is considered to be uh, or is, is uh, um, um, referred to as the so-called DAX expert due to their um, highly competitive offering when it comes to DAX 30 CFD trading uh, with a typical spread of 0 0.8 points, for example, during the main trading hours. There was also an adaptation, by the way, um, in their FIX um, uh, offering from Admiral. Also here, feel free to check out their website for further infos on that. And um, then finally here, have a look at the uh, um, um, countries in which Admiral Markets has a presence. It's not only that they have um, uh, regulated or are regulated by the FCA and having an office in uh, the UK, but it's also true that they're, for example, uh, regulated here by um, uh, the Australian Financial Services or via the Australian Financial Services license, FSL. Um, which uh, yeah shows that there's uh, a global presence and also here for further infos what this could mean to your trading and all this feel free to reach out to Admiral directly there are the contact details um, and now let's have a look at the agenda even though at the beginning I already said what will be our main focus today so the questions we want to answer are what are the key economic events in the coming trading week um, something I have to um, um, emphasize here right now is uh, sure the main focus will be on the ECB rate decision next week on Thursday especially after the comments from Mario Draghi in front of the um, uh, European Parliament in uh, Strasbourg that was on uh, Tuesday there were several very very interesting uh, um, um, uh, yeah things he said and which probably now result in uh, the bullishness also as, as a fundamental driver in equity markets in the DAX with a pushback above 11,000 points, but which are also very interesting when it comes to the action in uh, currency pairs like EURUSD, for example, dropping back below 114 after the breakout last week happened above 115 and then uh, no further momentum was uh, taking on the upside after the comments from the Atlanta Fedman uh, uh, Bostage. And um, yeah, so the ECB rate decision will be of high interest in the uh, next week of trading. Then we have the question which has to be answered here. What's the current bias in the FX equity and commodity markets? And also here, which trading opportunities may arise? And now let's switch over <clears throat> to the chart and have a look here. So you can see DAX right here, there, 11,100 points. So we are seeing a significant breakout on the upside here. Um, and in fact, I have to say, I'm not really surprised, um, to be honest. So in my opinion, I think there is uh, some further room on the upside, probably as high as um, here, 11,200, 11,300 points on the upside. Um, and the, the reason for that is that especially after all these developments over the last week of trading here, over the last days, especially around the Brexit, and that may come as a surprise to many because the defeat itself from Theresa May is showing that there is a huge, huge gap between um, uh, the... Uh, um, yeah, is a huge gap between the negotiations and the deal she uh, negotiated for the UK and uh, what Great Britain in general seems um, um, uh, to 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 um, to want to achieve in terms of a, of an orderly Brexit. All of them want to have it. Seems really the Parliament wants to have an orderly Brexit, but it seems on the other hand they don't want it at all costs. And currently they are probably playing. Um, um, they are probably playing. A card which is exactly aiming on um, showing that you needs Great Britain and maybe probably yeah sure Great Britain needs the EU too but currently probably uh, um, uh, the tide has turned a little and why do I say that we should always and all the time keep in mind that there is um, a strong trade relationship between Great Britain and Germany still um, in fact Germany and, or, um, um, and Great Britain is the fourth biggest trading partner um, of, uh, of Germany and when looking at the latest uh, economic data, you can clearly spot that there is um, a tendency here, 
in Germany, uh, which points to chances of a recession in the near term. So um, now Germany is the biggest economy of Europe. There's chances running high that probably rather sooner or later there will be um, at, at least let's call them some recessive uh, tendencies. And uh, we also know that from January onwards now, the ECB is not buying any bonds anymore um, in, in, uh, in, in regards to their QE program. So with all these uh, developments here, an unorderly Brexit, let's call it, um, or a Brexit with no deal is something uh, not only the UK wants to avoid, but also uh, Germany especially wants to avoid why, for example, Angela Merkel as the chancellor comes into play over and over again. Probably some of you have followed the media a little and um, there was um, all the time mentioning, or not all the time, but nevertheless, there was there was some pointing to uh, potential uh, talks now taking place between Theresa May and Angela Merkel. So, and this is no coincidence based on the uh, trade um, relationships Germany and Great Britain have. So after this big defeat now um, on Tuesday, uh, chances are obviously market participants start to speculate that there will be some kind of uh, concessions the EU will make or has to make, in fact, to avoid a no deal and to avoid um, um, a probably quite straight way into recession for the German economy, which, by the way, would lead, based on the fact that the QE program from the uh, ECB ran out at the beginning of the month, lead to um, probably even more drastic economic developments in the southern periphery. So, um, and this is something which is then the reason why markets are pushing higher and probably also and mainly driven by, and now let's have a look here. Oh, by the way, let me just have a look here. So let me just, ah, okay. Um, let me just have a look here. So this is the website from Admiral Markets um, and there, I already opened it. You can find um, the weekly market outlook, for example, in written format. Everything I present here um, now in the webinar can be found on Monday around 10, 11 a.m. German time, can be found here on the website from admiralmarkets.com and then you go to analytics and click on the traders block. But this is not the only article which appears there. There's also a technical pieces, for example, appearing as this one here from Wednesday around the DAX and after uh, this, this uh, defeat from Theresa May in the uh, UK parliament. But there's also other articles um, uh, which you can find there and making, for example, the uh, JPY flash crash at the beginning of the month, a topic um, covering what um, um, what was the reason for this flash crash and what can we drive um, um, or what can we get um, for um, for ideas and, and conclusions out of this, for example. But here we want to have a look at uh, the, the research piece from, from Wednesday, the technical piece in the morning, which referred then here to this vote in the UK Parliament from Tuesday evening. And <clears throat> I highlighted here um, uh, Tusk, Juncker and Europe Parliament in Strasbourg. And the reason for that is simple. So first of all, if you click on them, then Twitter feeds open, in this case, for example, from Donald Tusk and what he Twittered shortly after um, he became aware of this uh, development in the UK Parliament. Um, he Twittered, if a deal is impossible and no one wants no deal, um, and this is exactly what I said at the beginning. Well, then who will finally have the courage courage to say what the only positive solution is? Um, and I, I think I, I already mentioned it. In my opinion, it's concessions from the EU. Nothing more, nothing less. And this is exactly what the uh, UK is currently playing. Um, and probably also Theresa May is um, somehow knowing that this is uh, um, what will rather soon later than happen. And, and, and what she's probably aiming on her in her negotiations with the EU too. Um, in this context, let's have a look here at Jean-Claude Juncker. Uh, that was also shortly after he learned about the um, defeat from Theresa May and the Brexit deal. I take note with regret of the outcome of the vote in the House of Commons this evening. I urge the UK to clarify I'm sorry, to clarify its attentions as soon as possible. Time is almost up Brexit. Based on that, um, we can already say there's at least rumors um, that there uh, there will be a, lay, a delay of the Article 50. Um, so usually the um, uh, um, 
yeah, the, the Brexit date was or is still the 29th of March, but currently speculations are running high that this um, deadline will be extended and not only to May or June, um, but probably um, way into of the second half of uh, 2019, probably also into the year of 2020. Um, and now, and this is exactly now what I'm referring to, let's have a look here at the comments from Mario Draghi in the uh, parliament, EU parliament in Strasbourg. Unfortunately, by the way, they cut the article. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, this is great. It's uh, it's okay. So I, 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 I refer to you to the Wall Street Journal. It's not the Reuters article anymore in effect, um, but you can see here the headline already. Draghi warns lawmakers Eurozone economy is weaker than expected. Um, and he also said here, there's no room for complacency. Um, and uh, which is, in fact, somehow um, a hint that there won't be uh, rate hikes from mid 2019 onwards or at least speculations or talks about that so uh, but it's a it's a clear message that there will be a delay and probably we'll see the first rate hike uh, in 2020 um, um, just to make sure that we do not uh, go into a recession here um, too fast and, and and also due to the uncertainties around the brexit and this is something um, uh, uh, the British or the UK Parliament here is uh, probably um, seeing and aiming on and um, using um, as as a as a tool to say, okay, guys, we want a deal, yes, but um, but you have to to make concessions, else we won't get a deal. And then, okay, well, we have the unorderly Brexit, but this is something; it's not driving uh, the UK into recession and let's say into complete chaos, but it's also something you. Um, 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 don't want because else it will drive your economy into recession and into chaos too, to some extent into chaos. It's something you probably also want to avoid due to the uncertainties from a political landscape. That's a, let's have a look here at um, the developments in France, for example. And I can tell you, uh, based in Germany here, the situation is very tense here too. Um, and uh, based on that, I think there is no other choice than um, um, finding a deal based on concessions the EU will make. And uh, so let's come back to the price section then in the markets. This is probably one of the main reasons why we broke out now out of this channel here and have further room on the upside. Nevertheless, very important to note, in my opinion, um, it's... Uh, it's, it's first of all, it's a not a no-brainer trade, so be really careful st because um, as long as we trade below 11,700, 11,800 points, as long as we trade below this purple moving average here, simple moving average, um, as long as we as we do that, one second, please. I, I just have to have a look here. Oh, okay. Um, as long as we trade here um, below this region, the overall mode um, on a daily basis from a technical perspective is still short. And every push higher here is only a regressive, a regressive trade um, against the overall advantage and something to definitely keep in mind. Nevertheless, with the ECB next Thursday, um, chances are running high that probably Mario Draghi will um, use a similar rhetoric um, in the press conference here um, of, of the ECB. And this will probably point to a higher DAX here too. So drive the DAX higher, while on the other hand, this um, uh, rhetoric would drive the euro lower. Um, so yeah, that's that's the overall technical picture. Um, so make long things short, after the breakout, the short-term advantage um, on the lower time frames intraday for example here uh, let's have a look at the five minute DAX for example there's there was a push on the upside today a really nice squeeze to be honest and if we trade it here for example um, the presented strategy so-called open range breakout strategy um, which I presented here in a webinar series already uh, last year and um, for example you can grasp an idea of this approach if you also go here to the traders block and then you will see that before this technical piece here um oh by the way let me just see oh in fact no it's uh 
it's missing here. No, there we, there we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but you can see it there. Open range breakout. That was also published on Wednesday um, before uh, the technical piece, or no, it was shortly after. Um, so if you click on this, you can you can get an idea on how to use this strategy in your trading. And um, if you if you use this strategy and the rules for this setup here are explained in the article. If you scroll down a little, you can see it here. Identify the range um, between eight to nine o five a.m. Central European time. Then identify the advantage. Five minute EMA fifty. This is what you can see here. This is the blue line. Um, simple rule, if we break out on the upside while we are trading here above this blue line, we go long, else not. Um, on the other hand, if we trade below and break out on the downside of this identified range, then we go short. Um, and the stop placed accordingly with the take profit level here, with the take profit level of 2R then. So uh, the, the width of the range is the risk, is 1R. You multiply this number with 2. And then you have your setup. And in fact, today the setup worked out really, really nice. What you need for um, this open range setup to uh, to really play out well is an intraday trend structure. And um, that's exactly what we have today. And um, the market, yeah, obviously took on serious momentum here and uh, hit the the uh, take profit level several minutes ago, in fact. Um, but let's come back here to the um, price action. And I promised to give you an idea um, from the options markets too, what could have happened here. So it's purely speculative, but I think um, it's definitely something to take into account um, when you do your own research on the markets. And um, if you plan to identify regions of uh, stronger um, um, demand, respectively a support region, respectively a region of stronger supply, a resistance region. And um, it's not only based on technicals probably, most likely those market participants will also have a look at the chart and look at um, um, significant regions here. But to underline the significance of the region, it makes sense from time to time to have a look here at the website from the Eurex. Um, the Eurex um, is the uh, uh, reference market where the FTAX is traded and uh, the DAX 30 um, refers to in terms of the CFD here. And um, so there you have the chance, you can just Google a DAX, OREX and your options. So there's a German and there's an English version of that. And this is exactly where it will guide you to. That's one of the first results you get in Google. So if you scroll down then a little, it, it looks uh, like, yeah, to some extent very freaky, but you can draw really nice conclusions out of that. And then what exactly exactly what I want to, to present to you. So you have here the ODAX, this is the um, um, options on the FDAX, and they are expiring, or they expired in fact, several minutes ago at 1 p.m. the third Friday of the month, which is today. So, and um, now we want to have a look at the upside or yeah, the, the, um, yeah, the upside. And therefore we have to have a look here at the calls. So if you click on this, um, you get a similar freaky looking uh, table here. But again, you can draw very, very interesting conclusions out of that. What you do is, so you have here on the left, this is the strike price and you have on the right, and these are the only columns you want to look at, the right one here and the left one. Um, we wanna have a look here at the current region we traded. In. And the level um, we, we traded against was around 11,000 points. That was yesterday, but also today in the morning, we opened close to it, I think slightly above it. But um, the region we want to have a look at here is 11,000 points. So what I want to do here is now the following. I want to use snipping tool and then show you what is of interest for us. So we call this here the SP. Um, why is this SP? It's the strike price. Okay, we don't want to dig too deep into the topic of options and the theory behind this, um, but only get an idea of what could have happened here several minutes ago. So the strike price, open interest. And now you look here at 11,000 points, this, and you probably also have a look here at 10,900 points. So some of you might have um, seen the development yesterday in the evening, um, uh, yeah, of, of being interesting, let's say, um, that was shortly or into the evening. In, in Germany, it was the evening. There was a push higher, a, a, um, a short squeeze here, <clears throat> which drove the DAX um, here. That was, was it here? 
I think so, yes. Um, what, what drove the DAX higher? So the overall trading action, uh, price action yesterday, wasn't, uh, yeah, so interesting. In fact, was very volatile, wasn't really spectacular. But um, then here, um, that was around 9 p.m. German time. Uh, there was there was a significant, or shortly before, it was, I think, 8 840 or something. There was a there was a sharper spike on the upside, which uh, drove the DAX up to 10,980 points, and then we saw a small pullback, but nevertheless trended up to this level. And many probably wondered what happened there. There was um, a very interesting note, which was, by the way, uh, denied shortly after from the U.S. Treasury. But there was uh, the the um, message that U.S. weighs lifting China trade tariffs um, that was was Do what Dow Jones um, uh, delivered here and shortly after that what happened that's what happened here Treasury denies to Wall Street Journal in this case uh, any China tariff recommendations made um, it was sad that it was uh, Steve Munchen who, who uh, urged um, uh, the US probably Donald Trump to to lift those trades um, no one really knows if this is true or not. There's uh, now rumors that there will be a meeting between uh, Munchen and Trump today in the Oval Office. No one really knows if, if, uh, if this is true or not, if he will be fired or not. I mean, something you have to take into account when uh, when, when dealing with with someone like, like Donald Trump. Um, but the thing is that it resulted in a sharper push on the upside. Um, and m one of the main, main reasons for that was probably was already a thin market environment. And when looking here at this open interest, you could have seen that there were several market participants betting that the market won't make it above that level till today, 1 p.m. German time. Um, and now today we, we made it above that level and not only this, but today um, we, we also pushed above 11,000 points. And there was also quite high open interest of mark or market participants betting on the DAX closing or expiring, the options expiring with the DAX trading below 11,000 points. And then they see, well, obviously this does not happen, but the market is drifting higher. Expiration, uh, expiration is, is coming near. Um, and so you, you, you have to do something about your potential um, growing losses. Why growing losses? And therefore, let's switch here to this, um, um, to this piece. So we are looking at an option, a call option. Um, and what we do here when looking at this open interest, we're not looking at those market participants buying uh, an option and betting in case of a call option being long call betting on the prices to rise but we're looking at those selling those options here and th these people selling those options they aim on the market again stabilizing below a certain level um, like 11,000 points and this is the so-called strike price so let me do it that way let's write 11,000 above that 11,000 so um, so this is the strike price then. And what you can see is as long as we trade here below 11,000, this profile suggests that we're making money. The moment the market breaks above 11,000, we start to lose money. And especially, let's say um, uh, around 11,050 points probably, you really have to start worrying about your position because now you're definitely underwater and you have to, to um, do something to hedge this exposure here. And how do you do that? Well, what you usually do, and we do this in a very rough way, but I think the concept um, definitely makes sense and then to have a look at this. What you have to do is you have to buy an asset which has such a... Um, 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 payment profile and this is something you achieve by buying the FDAX then to hedge your exposure here um, um, on the on the upside which means you're not making any money anymore you're, you're delta neutral let's say but to achieve this delta neutral if you're only buying or in this case you sold the option well you have to buy the FDAX and if you do this in a thin market environment also something which happened yesterday probably in the evening then well this is what drives markets higher because this demand naturally does not find any 
um, bigger supply, let's say. So there will be supply, yes, but nevertheless, it's uh, um, usually a tendency that the market or that the demand will overcome the supply and markets will drive will be driven higher. And this is exactly, in my opinion, what just happened here over the last hours, um, because the market never really fell back below um, 11,000 points, but started to drift higher from there. And this is a clear sign that there were continuously buyers in the market driving the price higher. And by the way, now with the expiration, expiration being through, sure, this potential demand is probably diminishing a little. And that's, by the way, also probably one of the reasons why since for around 30 minutes there's no higher highs look at look at this by the way so that was uh the candle at 1 p.m that was when we started the webinar um and then shortly after it really it's as if there's no buyers anymore and the market starts to stop here this is the time when the expiration is through and nevertheless with the overall technical picture and the fundamental side i think there is a good chance driven by speculations around a more dovish ECB next Thursday, for example, and now markets anticipating this dovishness in the ECB. Um, all developments around this defeat from Theresa May in the UK Parliament, all this. Um, this is probably a good chance that, that the DAX will most likely push higher and you should be really, really careful when it comes to long positions here. Um, yeah, so that's it around uh, the DAX. As I, I hope that, that uh, you're as fascinated as I am. Um, I, I really love to look at the options and, and the developments here and how to use this then in your in your trading. Um, it's, it's not necessarily sad that you probably were on the long side, but um, it's also very valuable information for those taking short engagements into account and probably thinking, hey, do I really want to short this market? Or is there probably um, further pushes on the upside? I think um, there are several indications pointing to higher highs here in this case. For example, that we're, for example, still trading above this exponential moving average 50 here in a five minute time frame. Um, but also uh, knowing this, you know that there's some big boys uh, buying, probably not because they're speculating that the price will um, will be pushed higher, but probably because they have to hedge their exposure. And um, what we get to see is something we classically call um, a, a short squeeze in this case. So um, yeah, that's it around the DAX. Now let's have a look at the Euro uh, and the developments here. Also probably very interesting. Um, I think this, also weekly close last week was very, very weak um, with the push back below 115 and closing below 115 last week. But it's not only that, but you can see it here. That was on um, Tuesday. The comments from, from, from Draghi definitely were interpreted in the way as I already described it. Market participants see a definite pushback from rate hikes here um, into the future. Something which is um, probably um, 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 catching market participants uh, on, 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 the, on the wrong foot really here and now have to start to build short positions, especially when it comes to the bigger market participants or reducing their long exposure. They probably built with this push higher after um, the Atlanta Fed um, 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 chief Bostich said that he uh, would recommend the um, uh, Fed to yeah, probably don't be too aggressive with further rate hikes. This context, let's probably have a look again here at the weekly um, market outlook from Monday in this case. Uh, I mentioned it there. Let's have a look here. Yes, we'll scroll down a little. Oh, it's on the second page then. So there we go. That's uh, all eyes on the UK Parliament, excitement and GBP and Euro crosses. So what you can see here is, um, there you have it already. Uh, comments from FAT members in this case. So if you if you click on this, I think it should open. Yeah, an article from Reuters in this case around uh, Fed, Chef, uh, Fed Chief Bostich. The Fed needs to be patient, seek greater clarity on economic risks. So this is a picture of, of this um, um, uh, Fed member. And um, so that, that was something which drove the US dollar lower while, while the Euro USD pushed above 115 here. But then no further momentum was taken on the upside. Instead, we dropped lower. And this alone was already a sign that that was a potential fake out here on the upside. Um, while we are still in a neutral range, again, with um, the Fed, I'm sorry, the ECB 
to be expected more dovish in their statement on uh, next next uh, Thursday then I think chances are high that we are uh, probably stabilizing now a little and that the overall um, idea in in uh, in in the in the euro USD is more um, sell the bounce here so that we aim on seeing a push down to 112 probably push below that level to 11150 the only reason why I'm uh, a little skeptical if, if such a aggressive push probably will will happen is um, because of the ongoing US um, uh, shutdown here and I don't expect a US dollar, the US dollar to really um, um, see some significant um, 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 bullish, bullish spikes here too. That's by the way one of the reasons why I'm quite positive here for the uh, um, gold price still. Um, even though we now, for today at least, see some 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 losses, but overall the region around 1,300 USD per ounce is a level which will most likely be at least attacked over the next days again. That has not only to do um, with the with the fact that the US dollar is um, currently or should be considered weak, but it has also to do with the fact that we are still in a seasonal environment which is. Um, favorable or which favors further gold um, um, strength. It started on the uh, 14th of January, that was on Monday, and this seasonal pattern lasts till the uh, 5th of February, in fact, so uh, nearly one month. Um, also here, that was mentioned in this, in this weekly article on Monday, if we scroll down, you will see that here we have gold and there is this seasonal, uh, seasonal pattern described over the last 20 years. You could see um, gold rising in this um, in this in this uh, um, 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 time span in this period here, and uh, gaining on average 30.61 USD per ounce, while in those five years when gold lost, it only lost 12.86 USD per ounce. And um, so, in combination, US dollar weakness to be expected and seasonality, which points to 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 gold gains. I think the risk reward uh, for long engagements in gold is quite interesting, and um, also the technical technical significance, I'm sorry, the technical significance here um, of this region around 1,300. The fact that the, the bounces from this region are obviously um, getting smaller and smaller and obviously there's no real aggressive supply coming into the market but uh, the supply diminishes more and more. I think uh, there's a very good chance that that uh, will be a push higher. The question is how long will such a push higher then last? So. Um, we, we see already a quite huge extension here on the upside. Um, so now we are in a daily chart. It's not a four-hour chart anymore. So the market is very, very extended here on the upside. Um, nevertheless, what we can also spot is that this is short-term interesting. Long-term interesting is the region around 305, 308 here. So if we break above that level, further gains are likely then, which could easily push us higher another 30, 40 USD per ounce in uh, several days. And also from this perspective, it seems to be a very, very attractive, um, um, from a risk reward perspective, long um, environment in which gold finds itself um, in the current in the current uh, environment. So, but now let's come back here to uh, the currency markets and here to GBP USD. Um, the situation compared to the Euro USD, where we are more skeptical let's say and, and, and losses are expected due to our expectation of the uh, dovish um, uh, um, uh, rhetoric of the Fed then next uh, Thursday. The picture in GBP USD looks different um, in my opinion at least. Um, I think especially after this breakout here above 128, 2830 and with the expectation of the EU making concessions um, which I already pointed out um, at the beginning of this webinar in combination I think GBP USD uh, will most likely see another attempt to reconquer the region 130. Nevertheless, you should be careful. Why? Well, we're still trading um, in, a, in a bearish environment, similar to the DAX. You can see that everything what is taking place below 132.70, 133 here should be considered from a um, price action perspective, uh, should be considered bearish. And so be definitely careful. Nevertheless, um, the fundamental picture it, it starts to brighten a little, even though the defeat was um, uh, um, um, massive for Theresa May. Again, it 
it shows that that uh, there's no other way. If you really want to uh, have a deal here, and and the EU wants to have a deal here too, um, or and if it's not the EU, if it's not Brussels, well, it's Germany who wants to have a deal due to their um, uh, um, trade. Uh, um, relationships with the UK. Um, this is something which is most likely driving prices and pound sterling higher than lower, in my opinion, and probably especially against the US dollar, um, which, as I already mentioned, is um, or should be considered bearish right now. It's it's not really um, a strong environment in which we find um, the US dollar. Now, I've just realized that I did not prepare a chart here for currency pair, which is then of definite interest in, uh, very interesting, becoming really interesting for us. Um, so let me just open another chart in here for Euro GBP. Um, because if we're seeing GBP trading higher, while uh, there is some skepticism around the US dollar, nevertheless, we're not really sure if this will really play out, even though the US shutdown is expected to um, uh, continue at least over the next week of trading. You have to uh, see in this context that um, there won't be, um, or no, Donald Trump won't, won't go to Davos here, to the World Economic Forum, for example, which is uh, showing that the, that the, um, uh, that the shutdown will continue till that day. So, um, nevertheless, the thing is, um, it was also, or in my opinion, it's, a, it's an interesting currency pair here. It's Euro GBP on the daily chart. Usually, it's a very, very volatile currency pair. Um, but currently, it seems as if further, further um, losses in Euro GBP are likely, and we are probably making it down here to this region around 86.50. 86.70. So I just hope that. So, yeah. Now everything should be fine. So unfortunately, it's uh, a little delayed for whatever reason. So this is the region you're you're definitely watching here after this sharper bounce back from 91, and also the region around 191, and also um, after these developments. So all in all. The current environment points to further gains in GBP, while in combination with the more dovish outlook for uh, the ECB um, in, in their rhetoric, it usually points to losses you expect in the euro, which means euro GBP should be expected to gain further. And uh, so from the current environment here we are trading at, today we can, we can stabilize a little. Nevertheless, the overall momentum can clearly be found on the downside, as you can see here. Um, I think further losses are likely, and uh, a retest of this region around um, 86.50 here is definitely something to consider. So uh, the overall idea for, for pound sterling, when looking, for example, at a four-hour chart, is um, also sell the bounce. So probably any push higher to former significant low, probably the region around 88.70 or something, um, is something to consider for short engagements and probably here uh this is the um the uh um how can we call that this is this is the the last extreme which plays a certain role it's the uh no in terms of the confidence vote um uh against theresa may here and so everything which what is taking place below that level can be considered um still short-term bearish and, and Euro GBP then most likely will see further losses which will drive us down to um, 86, 86.50 here, the region around the lows from 2018 also here. So, so here, this region. Um, and in fact, that's it from my end. So um, nothing more to add. I uh, I don't see any questions in the chat box, so everyone seems to be happy. Um, I wish you uh, a nice weekend. Um, if any questions arise, please feel free to reach out to Admiral Markets, um, ask them the questions, and they will forward the um, uh, questions to me. I'll answer them, and 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 you get your reply. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out and. Uh, that's it from my end. So I wish you, um, I wish you um, um, a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you again next week on Friday with our weekly market outlook webinar on when, uh, um, um, Monday already. You will find um, the weekly market outlook in written form on the website from Admiral Markets in the uh, traders block there. 
And um, that's it for my end. So all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops. And uh, again, happy night. Happy, happy, happy weekend. Nice weekend. Um, talk to you next week. I look forward to it. See you and bye-bye.